Hello and welcome to Inspiring Aberdeenshire 2022. My name is Fiona Stalker. I am a TV and a radio presenter at BBC Scotland. I say this every year, but genuinely, it is a privilege and a pleasure to be here tonight. This is, without doubt, one of the most delightful events to be involved in of the year. It's heartwarming, it's fun, it's life affirming, and of course, as the title says, it is inspiring. My job, put simply, is to tell stories. And sadly, over the last couple of years, a lot of those stories have been pretty grim and often heartbreaking. But I am always, always humbled when I hear stories of resilience, of compassion, of kindness, of community spirit. And that always restores your faith in human nature, even in the most challenging of times. And I'm acutely aware that many people watching tonight will have been through some of the most challenging times of their lives and your journeys are the most inspiring. You often do it instinctively without any regard for external recognition. But tonight is about recognising you, about recognising the difference that you have made and recognising the challenges that you have overcome and about recognising the legacies that you are leaving. As you may have noticed, the eyes of the world have been on Aberdeenshire in the past few weeks. Early in September, I started my week of broadcasting from Westminster with many of my colleagues at Balmoral uh, on Royal D side, where the Queen saw one Prime Minister out and one Prime Minister in. Just two days later, the focus once again was on Royal D sides, where the monarch spent her final days. Now, amidst all the official, very traditional protocol that surrounded the reporting of that event were the touching human stories, many of them from this part of the world. I interviewed the owner of the hardware store in Ballater, who was the official royal supplier of televisions to the Queen. He spoke about being called to the castle to fix the Queen's radio, he got a phone call, which was getting interference from special branch radios. And by the way, she was a Radio 2 listener. It is the human stories that touch us. It's the interactions that we have. We're now in our 10th year of the Inspiring Aberdeenshire Awards, and each year this event lets us come together to celebrate the outstanding work and achievements of people across Aberdeenshire. This is a truly special event. Whether you're watching the awards tonight for the first time or have been following along with us online for these last few years, then a very warm welcome to you. As some of you know, Bill Howitson stepped down from his role as Aberdeenshire Provost earlier this year after heading up the inspiring judging panel for the final time in May. I know you're watching tonight, Bill, and I hope you are having a wee glass of something to celebrate. I hope you all are to toast the finalists. I'm delighted to be joined tonight by the new Provost of Aberdeenshire, Judy White. Judy, it's uh, lovely to have you here tonight. The Provost and I will be taking you through this evening and introducing our performers, our finalists, our guests and our presenters. So let me pass now to Judy to say a few words and get the evening officially underway. Thank you very much, Fiona. Good evening to you all. I've been delighted to serve Aberdeenshire as a councillor but it really is an honour to be able to join you tonight in person in my new role as Provost and to be part of this fantastic event. These last few years, like you, I have been watching and cheering on our finalists from the comfort of home. This year, I get to experience the other side of the screen and to be here with Fiona and the filming crew, not quite as relaxing, but I can really feel the sense of anticipation and excitement for the night ahead of us. I hope that we can bring some of that to you tonight. We're joining you virtually again for the awards presentations as it allows us to share these wonderful stories with so many of you online. For all of you watching with us, welcome. It's great to see your comments cheering all the finalists on. It was our intention to stream these awards slightly earlier in the year. However, we took the decision to move this event following the death of Her Majesty the Queen on Deeside in September. We saw all of Aberdeenshire come out to pay their respects in such an extraordinary and dignified way. Her Majesty's passing will be mentioned a few times during this event a sign, if you needed it, of how much of a neighbour she was to our communities and not just a monarch. So we thank you for your patience while we found a new date to stream these awards. 
and her legacy in Aberdeenshire will live on in these awards. More of that later on. I'd like to welcome tonight our finalists, their families and friends. Welcome to fellow councillors, council colleagues, sponsors and all the other guests joining us. As Fiona said, 10 years of inspiring Aberdeenshire. It has started small and it has blossomed over the years into the event we know today. But its reason for being stays unchanged, to celebrate the achievements and successes of people across the area. Over the years, we've heard the stories of hundreds of finalists, themselves just a small selection of the many nominations we receive each year. Whether you are recognised tonight as a winner, finalist or not, Aberdeenshire is a better place for the work that you do and the spirit that you encompass. Tasked with selecting our finalists and winners is a small judging panel, reformed each year to include a range of views and experiences. Let's hear from some of those who took part in the process this year. My name is Andrew Simpson, Lord Lieutenant of Banffshire. It was a huge honour to be asked to be part of the judging panel for this year's awards. And it was exciting as well. Exciting when we received the different nominations to read through them and to find out about the fantastic commitment and the dedication of so many people in so many different ways across our area. It was exciting also to learn of the difference that volunteers make. They make these difference to other individuals, to families, to groups, to our communities in general, to the environment and to our heritage. So thank you to everybody who was put forward and well done to you. You make a difference and what you've done has been appreciated. Can I also thank those who did the nominating Thank you for taking the time to recognise other people's achievements in our communities and to take the time to put their names forward for this. But particularly to the finalists and to those who've won, many, many congratulations. The competition was tough. We had some very difficult decisions to make. But you stood out as being inspirational, as being an inspiration to all of us to get involved, to volunteer, and to make a difference to our communities. So very well done to everybody, and thank you for the privilege and the honour of being involved in this awards scheme. Thank you. I just want to say a few words about all of the nominations and finalists we have in front of us today for all of the different categories for Inspiring Aberdeenshire. As ever, it's been an absolute honour and a privilege to be involved in the judging, to see so many high quality uh, and really amazing people being nominated for such good work and amazing feats of uh, help, hospitality, camaraderie, uh, friendship for friends, family and community and people they don't always know across Aberdeenshire. Uh, each year just seems to get more and more difficult to be able to judge and to navigate. Uh, again, we haven't had the most straightforward year as a society, as a community here. Uh, but again, as ever, people are just continuing to step up and do the most amazing things. So a uh, huge well done and thank you from me for all of the people who have been put forward, for everyone who has nominated someone. I'm really looking forward to see who the finalist and the winner is going to be. Thank you. You know, it's an honour and it gives me immense pride to once again be involved in this award ceremony, which showcases the fantastic selfless community work taking a place right across Aberdeenshire. If 32 years of policing has taught me anything, it's shown me that the importance of communities coming together, working with service providers, businesses, charities and others to help people and make things better for communities and individuals. It was humbling and inspiring to read the details of so many kind-hearted people who give their time so generously to help others. The judges uh, were so impressed with the wide range of nominations containing stories which demonstrates how strong the community spirit remains in Aberdeenshire. 
I'd like to say thank you to everybody who's working so hard, making a difference. Not just the winners, but the runners-up and everybody who was nominated. You are changing lives for the better. And that's a wonderful achievement. Congratulations and thank you. As the new provost, I'm very much looking forward to joining the judging panel next year. Joining us tonight are a range of companies kindly sponsoring the event to help us champion our community heroes. You can read all about them and why they support Inspiring in our digital programme. You will also see that tonight we are being treated to some performances. Local acts showcasing some of the fantastic talent we have across the area. I'd like to kick off tonight's proceedings with a performance from a very special young lady. Some of you may know her from Facebook as Scotland's Best Kept Secret. It's Erin Ingalls. Standing on the platform, watching you go. Their pain I've ever known to love someone so much to have no control. You said, I want to see the world, and I said, Go. But I think I'm lost without you I just feel crushed without you Cause I've been strong for so long That I've never thought how much I needed you I think I'm lost without you
An incredible voice, Erin, uh, from a very inspiring young lady. Now, on to the awards themselves. Our camera crew have spent the summer travelling across our beautiful Aberdeenshire lucky things, you lucky lot, to film our finalists so that we can share their stories with you. So let's get started with the introductions. Our first award tonight is our Aberdeenshire Future Award. It's sponsored by one of our headline sponsors, Neos Networks. And Councillor Gillian Owen, Chair of the Council's Education and Children's Services Committee, will introduce the award. Thank you and good evening to you all. I'm delighted to kick off the award presentations tonight. The Aberdeenshire's Future Award is presented to a young individual under the age of 25 who has shown great leadership and helped to inspire and motivate others in support of a local cause. Let's have a look at our finalists. Stephen Strachan is finishing his time at Inverurie Academy, throughout which he has been a pioneering volunteer within the Leaders in Sport programme. He has always been first to come forward for any additional volunteering, and that has seen him assisting with Primary 1 and Primary 7 transition programmes, helping out his old primary school at Kellens with after-school football and basketball, marshalling at Rungiri and the Active Schools Running Series, and despite the disrupted school year since 2020, he has also held one of the Sports Scotland Young Ambassador roles at Inverurie Academy. His volunteering has also extended into the local community as he progressed from participant to volunteer helper at Colony Park Football Club. It is Stephen's ability to engage, communicate, humour, empathise and simply ensure that fun is always at the forefront which makes him such a great role model. This category epitomises everything that Stephen has given to Inverurie Academy and the wider local community. Lucy Patterson and Olivia Gemmel were P7 pupils at Hillside School. Both girls volunteered as part of their lunchtime each day to support P3 and P4 pupils while they were having their lunch. Now this isn't a nomination for opening crisp packets, putting straws in juice cartons or helping clear up, as important as that is. It's for the difference these girls were making to these pupils' school days. They spread positivity and joy through the effort they put into engaging with every single one of the children. They played games, helped fellow pupils as they needed it, and made conversation. They identified anyone who didn't have someone to play with and helped them to make friends and really supported positive connections between younger children. It is also said they spent their own free time creating games to play with the pupils and new ways of supporting the younger kids. Not only are Lucy and Olivia Hillside heroes, they are also Aberdeenshire heroes too. Ruby Peace is described in her nomination as an outstanding member of the Inverurie Academy community. She has shown great leadership and helped inspire and motivate other students. Like so many young people, Ruby has been dealing with the challenges of living and studying during a global pandemic. Despite this being such an incredibly challenging time, she continues to work hard, leading by example and showing outstanding resilience. Her commitment to peer support has made such a difference to so many younger students across the academy. This extends to wider school life and means Ruby is recognised as someone with a genuine interest in others. She regularly helps out with many of the school's more vulnerable students through the ASL department. In her final year, Ruby was appointed to the prestigious role of one of the school captains. She is a very active member of the Charities Committee, recently working to establish a Come As You Please Day to raise funds for Ukraine. It is said that Ruby plans to go on to become a primary school teacher, a career she, without doubt, has all the necessary skills and talents for. Congratulations to all our young finalists. I'm delighted to reveal that the winner is Stephen Strachan.
Congratulations to our first winner. Very well done to you. And to all our finalists tonight, whether a winner or not, we're so proud of you and so glad to be celebrating the work that you do. It really does make a difference and it leaves, it leaves a legacy and the impact on your communities cannot be underestimated. Next up is the Inspirational Volunteer Award sponsored by Aberdeenshire Voluntary Action. I'd like to introduce Councillor John Crawley, Chair of Infrastructure Services Committee, to present the award. Thank you, Fiona. I'm incredibly pleased to join you tonight and present this fantastic award. The Inspirational Volunteer Award is given to an individual or group who have gone the extra mile by volunteering for a local initiative that makes a difference to the lives of others or communities. Now let's have a look at our finalists. Willie Linklater suffered a stroke in 2019, but once he recovered, he put his experience and enthusiasm into helping other people and raising funds and awareness for stroke survivors. He set about cycling the length of John O'Groats to Land's End, but in and around Inverurie, raising over £2,000. He was key in the creation of a volunteer-led non-profit group called Utina Boot, with the main focus of facilitating social gatherings with particular attention to the needs of those who have mobility difficulties. Alongside this, he is a volunteer for the Baileys of Benahy, which is a conservation society which protects the landscape around Benahy and encourages the public's engagement in the area. If that's not enough, he also volunteers for Inverurie events. Willie is an inspiration to his community and his nomination recognises all that he has done and continues to do for Inverurie. Leslie Paul works tirelessly for people in the Lothermuir community. She is heavily involved in the community larder, collecting supplies, running the larder and delivering produce to local elderly residents. She shops for those who are unable to do so themselves, often buying shopping at her own expense. She transports people to hospital and doctor's appointments and she single-handedly plants, maintains and waters all of the plants displays in the village. She is also a member of the Village Improvement Group, involved in fundraising, creating, maintaining and emptying the dog waste bins and the never-ending grass cutting and general upkeep of this area. Leslie will go out of her way to help any individual or group. She is an inspirational person who works tirelessly to make the local and wider community a better place for everyone to enjoy. Morag Lightning suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder, diagnosed following her deployment to the Iraq War in 2003 and two subsequent tours of duty in Afghanistan. Since being discharged, she has immersed herself into the Tariff community, striving to make it a better place for all. Her list of volunteering work is vast. She has set up various committees and groups, is a founding member of Friends of Tariff Cemetery and a member of the local Crafty Wednesday group. She has been fundraising for a memorial at the National Memorial Arboretum for the Women's Royal Air Force, is also a local ambassador for Op Spartan, a worldwide group of veterans who work together to help veterans in need, is part of the Hague's redevelopment group, the Tariff Sports Hub, the Jubilee Yarn Bombers and, until recently, Tariff and District Community Council. Morag really is a Tariff champion, a community champion and someone to look up to. Grampian Opportunities have been nominated and shortlisted because of the kindness they have shown to their community by finding ways to work within Covid restrictions to keep connected, alleviate the impact of social isolation and offer support to those facing health, well-being and financial challenges. GO is a not-for-profit organisation based in Inverurie which works to develop opportunities for people with disabilities, mental health challenges, sensory impairment, autism or long-term conditions to be actively involved in the community. GO's strength is in collective action, providing opportunities for people of all abilities to collaborate, learn and volunteer together in meaningful activities and projects that really do make a difference in addressing some of our society's most challenging problems.
The pandemic brought significant additional challenges, but which the group met admirably, and this allowed them to keep working to support their network. Go works hard to stay ahead in assessing community need, stay true to their mission of helping people to help themselves. The community at Grampian Opportunities truly live up to their core values and deserve to be recognised as an inspirational volunteer group. Giving your time and passion is a wonderful contribution to your communities and really does serve as an inspiration to all of us. Well done. And the winner is Morag Lightning. Some incredible uh, volunteer work there. Congratulations to you. Very well deserved. Our third award is the Heart of Aberdeenshire Caring Award, which is sponsored by TPS Fruit and Veg. The award is presented by Councillor Anne Sterling, Deputy Leader of Aberdeenshire Council, and a veteran, I mean that in the kindest way, a veteran of these delightful awards. Good evening. I'm pleased to join you once again to present this award. The Heart of Aberdeenshire Caring Award is for a person or group who has had a significant and positive impact on the lives of vulnerable people. Our nominees care for others, either through the course of their employment, care for a family member, or act as a volunteer carer. So let's take a look at our finalists this year. Caroline Brunton is a teacher at Kellen's School and her nomination couldn't sing her praises more loudly. Incomparable, inspiring, selfless, caring and loving. She is a complete one-off, a maverick. They broke the mould when they made her. A pioneer, a guru in all things nurture and counselling. But most of all, someone with the biggest heart I have had the pleasure to work with. Caroline is one of those teachers who spends her whole life supporting and helping others in hardship, be that emotionally or economically. She is always there no matter what, despite her own hard times. She spends all her time supporting youngsters, getting them active, support with their development and even getting the kids to school. In short, Caroline is always listening to her young people and her community, and that's not all. She works outside school as a team leader and a trainer at Childline and also serves on the children's panel, all while undertaking a counselling degree. Caroline has made a difference to so many lives, often dealing with life-threatening, suicide, mental illness, poverty, loneliness and desperation issues. We all need a Mrs B in our corner. Formed by volunteers in late 2019, the Friends of Al Amal exist to support resettling refugee families across Aberdeenshire. They started by offering one-to-one -one support and informal language practice. However, volunteers now deliver a wide range of community projects, events and support packages. These include a gardening project, poetry and storytelling, one-off events, digital IT training for women, one-to-one -one language and befriending, a women's group and more. The Friends are currently planning an international New Scots Women's Day, a joyous celebration of women, food and friendship, which will bring Syrian, Iraqi, Afghan, Eritrean, Ethiopian and ethnic Palestinian refugee women together for the first time in over two years. They are an amazing group of volunteers who always go the extra mile with smiles and humility but during the pandemic, they really excelled. Despite all being volunteers, they never failed to support families and the refugee resettlement team. And they are such a crucial part of the overall success of refugee resettlement in Aberdeenshire. Helen Cox has provided short breaks in long-term care to looked after children for Aberdeenshire Council for nearly 50 years. Described by the judges as a genuine local champion, working and supporting vulnerable children. She came into her role almost by accident. Her daughter had made friends with a girl at school who was living in a children's home in Rhiney and asked if she could come to stay a weekend. This young girl then ended up coming and living with them for two years. 
Helen and her late husband progressed into short breaks and emergency placements to make sure the kids were getting to do things they might not normally do and were enjoying themselves in a safe environment. She has gone over and above for the kids in her care and this desire to provide support is what led her son to support children's panels, proof that desire to care can be passed down a family line. Congratulations to all the amazing finalists. And now I am delighted to announce that the winner is Helen Cox. Congratulations to you, well done. Our fourth award tonight is the Cultural Award, which is sponsored by Oxygen Finance. Introducing it is Councillor Ron McHale, our Deputy Provost. Thank you, Fiona. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for having me back tonight to present the Cultural Award. This award is given to an individual or community group who has made an excellent contribution to the promotion of local culture in Aberdeenshire. Now, let's have a look at the finalists. The care group runs at the Gordon Schools in Huntley to work with kids who are care experienced, part of the LGBT plus community and those who have experienced trauma in their lives. It was set up in order to introduce the young people to a range of activities and creative projects which could support their mental health and encourage their engagement in learning. The range of activities they have been a part of is vast, from Christmas carols to tie-dye classes to the creation of a film which was projected on the side of Huntley Castle in partnership with the Youth Music Initiative. The film became a real showcase of what the area had to offer and has caught the attention of the Royal Conservatoire, who would like to work with the group next session. However, it is the impact of meeting up on a regular basis, supported by school and the community, that makes this group special. It enables young people to share their experiences and feelings with other like-minded people in a safe and relaxed atmosphere. It allows those supporters and staff from school to listen and be more aware of their needs and then know how to help them. This group allows them to show their school and community how mature, responsible and valuable they are. The Giri Theatre Festival has, for at least 20 years, presented an arts festival in the heart of Aberdeenshire to highlight local talent as well as bringing visiting performers to the area. As part of the programme to get ready for the festival, young performers are exposed to a year-long programme teaching them about writing, direction, costuming, live music, lighting and staging. As well as developing new cultural talent, it builds skills and confidence and understanding that the young people can take away for the rest of their lives. They are keeping local culture alive and drawing in all ages to participate. Local theatre groups also perform work of local Aberdeenshire writers in Scots and Doric. Performers from outside the local area broaden the experience for audiences and highlighting issues which need discussion, as well as entertaining adults and young aspiring performers. The Heritage Hub in John's Haven operates as a museum in the summer, as well as a community hub and art gallery throughout the year. Staffed by a leadership team and a band of volunteers, they have built a strong reputation locally and abroad, both in person and online, to promote the coastal strip and promote the little-known facts and heritage of John's Haven. The group aims to boost tourism and improve the economic and cultural outlook for the whole of the Merns. Their latest project is Taking the Museum Outside, a series of short videos talking to the audience about local history and interesting facts in an engaging way. John's Haven is a very old coastal fishing village with a long and rich history, so the aim of the videos is to tell the story of the lives of these families of old who should not be allowed to be forgotten. The Heritage Society is an inspiration in keeping the history of the village alive for generations to come. Gordon Hay was described by the inspiring judges as a loyal custodian of the Doric language. 
He has become well known for his work promoting the Doric language through songs and stories. Among his best known work is the publication of the New Testament in Doric in 2012, as well as producing the Doric Messiah. In 2021, he produced a series of nursery rhymes in Doric, taking classic rhymes known to households in the Northeast and rendering them in his native tongue. The books have proved so popular that he has regularly requested copies from local schools and asked to go along and speak to pupils about the Doric language. Gordon's work is helping to keep Doric alive. Some incredible and outstanding work there to keep our local culture alive. And the winner is the Ben Holm and John's Haven Heritage Society. Well done. Congratulations. Fantastic. Time for another performance. Now, a real treat. And to continue our celebration of culture, let's hear now from the Banff Academy Trad Band.
Our next award is Beautiful Aberdeenshire Environmental Awards. It's sponsored by Instock and will be presented tonight by Councillor Sarah Dickinson. Before I hand over to Sarah, though, I must share that uh, very sadly, one of our finalists, Alan Cameron, passed away. I want to pass on to Judy now to say a few words about Alan. Thank you, Fiona. Alan was rector of Ellen Academy for 35 years before standing as a councillor for Aberdeenshire and serving with us until 2007. But it was his work with Ellen Castle Garden that saw him nominated and selected as a finalist for the awards tonight. As a long-standing member of the Garden Committee, his work, alongside other active groups, resulted in him leading the trust set up to support the community garden. Alan spent considerable time and effort raising awareness through the internet and helping to raise funds, breathing life into the garden. He continued to be totally dedicated to this concept and took his duties as community involvement volunteer very seriously. The garden is a beautiful community space, loved by many and enjoyed by all ages. A true legacy to a man who will be missed in Ellen and across Aberdeenshire. Thank you, Judy. And our thoughts, of course, tonight are very much with Alan's family and friends. Before I pass over to Sarah, we have a special message for our winner from the Lord Lieutenant of Aberdeenshire, Sandy Manson. As Lord Lieutenant, it is my great honour to represent His Majesty the King in Aberdeenshire. My role, along with my Deputy Lieutenants, is to uphold the dignity of the Crown and support and encourage the many voluntary organisations, community-minded individuals and local businesses and the invaluable work they do. In doing this, we organise royal visits, nominate individuals and organisations for honours and attend many community and civic events throughout the county. This year in June in particular, we had the joy of celebrating Her Majesty's Platinum Jubilee. And then, only three months later, we experienced the great sadness of the passing of Her Majesty the Queen. One of the ways the country was commemorating Her Majesty's Platinum Jubilee was through the planting of trees as part of the Queen's Green Canopy. And over one million trees were planted across the UK in the first planting season. Following the loss of the Queen, His Majesty the King has suggested that the Queen's Green Canopy Initiative be extended to the end of March 2023 in order to give people the opportunity to plant trees in memoriam to honour Her Majesty. The extension of this wonderful initiative will therefore allow us all to build on the legacy of the existing trees already planted and serve as a lasting tribute to Her Majesty's extraordinary service to her country and her people. We're standing here at Old Meldrum, uh, next to a crab apple tree that was planted as part of the Queen's Green Canopy. And there are countless other, many other examples throughout Aberdeenshire. Following the passing of Her Majesty, and given the close and the enduring links between the late Queen and the King and his family, the Aberdeenshire Lieutenancy uh, therefore thought it would be very fitting to donate a young tree for planting to the winner of the beautiful Aberdeenshire Award at this year's inspiring Aberdeenshire Awards. Aberdeenshire is a beautiful county and we all have a role to play in maintaining this most special of environments as it stretches from the coastline of Fraserburgh to the mountains of Braemar. That's why it's great to see the incredibly valuable work done by the finalists in this category. Thank you and congratulations to all the finalists for the inspiring and remarkable work you're doing to keep Aberdeenshire beautiful. Good luck tonight. Good evening, and what an amazing evening it's been so far, showcasing the talent, the efforts, and the successes of so many individuals across Aberdeenshire. And we have more to come. It's my privilege tonight to present this award. The beautiful Aberdeenshire Environmental Award is for an individual or group who are working hard to enhance the area's natural beauty through environmental initiatives. Let's hear more about the finalists.
The Stonehaven Horizon Project are a band of volunteers who look after numerous hanging baskets and planters around the town of Stonehaven throughout the year. They work closely with the Council's Landscape Services team on community projects and their aim is to promote civic pride in the town and to make Stonehaven a better place in which to live. In 2021, they decided to enter the Beautiful Scotland competition and the result was months of work to upgrade parts of the community, get groups on board and put in hours of work. It was a huge effort by so many in the town and the Horizon Group were awarded a Silver Gilt Award in the Coastal Town category. Described by the judges as a very high silver gilt, very close to gold, from a new entrant which has hit the ground running and promises a bright future. During the last four years, Casper Lampkin has been one of the main driving forces behind the restoration of the Merns Coastal Heritage Trail from John's Haven to St Cyrus. This core coastal path has become impassable in many places. He has worked tirelessly to resurface sections which had slipped to install drains, create natural ponds and plant willow to prevent field water causing further landslips, as well as interventions to prevent sea erosion from causing further damage. Through his numerous volunteer days, he has planted locally grown trees and coastal wildflowers, weeded, strimmed and scythed doing what he can to maintain this resource. It is also about educating future generations and he has been at the forefront of education projects on permaculture. Casper is locally recognised as being the reason that a once nearly lost local resource is now in safe hands. Fantastic work. Aberdeenshire is so lucky to have you. Well done, everyone. And our winner is, for 2022, Casper Lampkin. Congratulations to you. On to our next award. It's a very special one. It's the Local Hero Courage Award. To present this, please welcome Aberdeenshire Council Chief Executive, Jim Savage. Thanks both. Good evening, everyone. Please allow me to introduce our next award, our Local Hero Award. In this category, we will hear the stories of those who, in the face of adversity, have shown courage, bravery, and dedication to helping overcome a difficult situation. Let's have a look at the finalists. Jenny Radford is an Ellen Primary School teacher and is the glue that has held together a community when it is facing its toughest times. She works across the Ellen area with several individual children and their families literally changing lives. Jenny worked with families on the brink at the point of splitting up, nurturing and educating, helping them to enjoy being together again. She has worked with children unable to access education and got them back into school full time. And it isn't just at a desk. She uses beach time or exploring in the woods to help young people work out how to talk and express emotions, all while navigating some incredibly challenging situations. Jenny is truly inspiring to everyone who meets her and has helped save lives. Until this summer, Lorraine Coleman is the longest serving teacher at Mint Law Academy. Back in 2008, she was diagnosed with cancer but following her recovery, she has become a true champion of supporting cancer charities. She is utterly dedicated to supporting those with cancer, largely through her work with Cancer Research UK. From school events to events cheer for Relay for Life in Peterhead since 2012, addressing all your groups at Mint Law Academy assemblies in person and virtually, and sharing the message about her experience and those who have not been so lucky. Thank you very, very much, everybody. Despite retiring, she is showing no signs of slowing down. She continues to work tirelessly to promote the need for ongoing support for a broad range of cancer charities, a hero in its truest sense. Martin Anderson showed his heroism during the storms of late 2021 and early 2022. His was described as a highly commendable example of how one person can make such a difference to others. 
When things got bad, he was out in often incredibly difficult conditions to rural locations to take generators to those who were cut off without power for extended periods. His main focus was helping young families and vulnerable people. There is no doubt that his community-mindedness saved lives. He did what he could, fitting extension cables and setting up power so people could run electric heaters as well as offering device charging and had floodlights set up around his vehicle for lighting within the community. He worked round the clock in the most awful conditions for days on end. It isn't hard to see that his actions saved lives, making him a hero. Some truly inspiring stories there. Heroes really do come in all shapes and sizes. And the winner is Lorraine Coleman. Congratulations to Lorraine and to all the finalists there. And whilst you have me here, I'd like to take a moment to talk to you about the past year. To say it's been another roller coaster year would be an understatement. Looking at the finalists shows the immense work you have all done across all of your communities. It's important that we also take time to recognise the work of the council and all the staff across the different council services. It's woven through everything that we do, all stages of people's lives day to day and across the ground in all of our communities across Aberdeenshire. Let's take a little look back at the year since we were last together for Inspiring Aberdeenshire.
If I can, Fiona, I would just like to come in here and remark about the extraordinary work done by Aberdeenshire Council colleagues this past year. The death of the Queen has already been mentioned by the way that Council colleagues came together to mark her death and her cortege passing through Aberdeenshire showed the utmost respect and dignity. For all their work on that and all these other projects, I am very grateful. Now, our penultimate award of the night is the Community Spirit Award. Council Leader Mark Finlater is here to introduce the award. Good evening, folks. Fit like. I am delighted to be here tonight to introduce the Community Spirit Award. This award goes to an individual or group who has supported a cause or project which helps to foster a spirited, embracing and vibrant local community. Let's have a look at the finalists in this category. JSK Running Group or Jog Scotland Contour was set up in 2014 to fill a gap in the Contour area for a running group which catered to all levels, whether that be experienced runners, people just starting or those looking for a new social avenue. The group grew so quickly and became so popular that in 2016 they won Jog Scotland Group of the Year. The remit was extended to supporting healthy lifestyles and sport for local school kids and supporting members' mental health and well-being during the pandemic. They have a strong focus on charity and run a large annual relay raising funds for Cayley's Wee Stars and Gathimba Edwards Foundation. The group's efforts were described by the judges as a truly excellent example of a cause to support others. For a community running group to have 300 members in a community of 4,000 speaks volumes about the work they do to engage Contour and establish its community spirit. Yay! Reverend Dr Kay Gold led her community through the Covid pandemic but is recognised again tonight for her role in supporting in response to Storms Arwen, Corrie and Malik. She, along with helpers, supported the Inch community from their base in the church hall, opening daily as a safe and warm place to rest and from where hot soup and food was provided while he arranged food parcels for local delivery. She worked closely with the council as the eyes and ears on the ground and has been part of shaping the wider future community response to such incidents. Dr Gold impressed the judges with her understanding of the needs of a community. Reverend Gold was a guest at Westminster Abbey back in December, where Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cambridge hosted the Together at Christmas Community Carol Service for those individuals who have gone above and beyond in supporting their communities during the pandemic. The Aberdeenshire Covid community testing team came together from all walks of life in response to an ask from the Scottish Government to offer community testing. They ranged from ex-engineers, welders, barbers, hairdressers, stewards, people who worked in sales, care sector and retail. Initially the offer was a 12-week testing facility in Peterhead, which grew to cover the whole of Aberdeenshire. In the 14 months the team existed, they handed out 200,000 kits, delivered 40,000 kits to community groups, supported 5,500 observed tests and visited 30 towns and villages on a regular basis. They responded to calls when the council most needed it to support the vulnerable in our communities, such as delivering food during storms Arwen, Malik and Corrie, or helping in welfare hubs and carrying out door knocks in areas of avian flu. There is no doubt they helped make our communities feel safer and contributed greatly to the response to COVID-19 at the point of greatest need. Community spirit is abundant in Aberdeenshire. It really does make it such a special place. Our 2022 winner is the JSK Running Group. Well done, folks. Some incredible work. Very, very inspiring. Well done to everyone. Very well deserved. Our last and final award of the night, and a favourite among viewers, is the Inspiring Aberdeenshire 
Lifetime Achievement Award. It is sponsored by one of our headline sponsors, BP, and I will hand over to you, Judy, to introduce. Thank you. Well, I can't believe how the time has flown, but we have reached that point of the evening where we move on to our final award, the pinnacle of the event, our inspiring Aberdeenshire Lifetime Achievement Award. This award is presented in recognition of an outstanding contribution to a local cause, project, initiative or community. These finalists are a true inspiration to others across Aberdeenshire. Hello everyone and congratulations to all the nominees and finalists in this year's Inspiring Aberdeenshire Awards. I'm Catherine McKee, the Head of Communications for BP in Scotland and we're delighted to be supporting this event again, recognising the outstanding work that you all do in your community. BP has been operating in Scotland for over a century and Aberdeen has been the home of our oil and gas business for more than 50 years. And we keep growing here with new opportunities now in low carbon energy like offshore wind and hydrogen. We think Aberdeen City and Shire is just a great place to live and work and that's why we're really pleased to be associated with the Lifetime Achievement Award this evening and we really want to congratulate everybody for the work they do to go that extra mile to make this northeast corner of Scotland such a special place to live and work. Congratulations everybody and the best of luck to you all this evening. Marion Bruce has served the Porterton community for 65 years. She took over the local shop from her father and over the years has continued to serve the community in the shop by keeping it open seven days a week. She and her family took the initiative during the pandemic to find ways of keeping stocked with essentials, undertook a grocery and medicine delivery service and kept the paper deliveries going. Marion and her family worked in excess of 100 hours a week for the majority of their lifetimes to keep the post office and shop open and serving the Potterton community. In the nomination, her daughter said, she has always gone above and beyond in her role in this wee village. Her role in our community hasn't been just a job to her, but a vocation. It's been a commitment and a responsibility. She is recognised in this nomination for her part in keeping the community together, her unwavering dedication to the people she served and her love for Potterton. Stephen Knox is described in his nomination as an exceptional teacher, colleague and friend. He has gone above and beyond throughout his career and supported hundreds if not thousands of people ranging from the pupils in his care during the school day, the staff around the school in times of difficulty and his friends when they need him. He has provided a safe space in his classroom to support pupils who have issues with mental health or relationships and is always a trusted voice of support. He went over and above to keep staff morale up during the pandemic and beyond, not only supporting his department but also the wider school. He has supported many young teachers in their development, devoting a significant amount of his own time to be a mentor. Stephen is a priceless asset to the people of Aberdeenshire and Kemney Academy as a worker, a teacher, a citizen and an outstanding member of society. Rosie Nicholl is the hardest working volunteer you could hope to meet. As a volunteer with Belhelvy Community Trust, she is described as a force of nature, always looking after her community. She runs the Community Trust and under this umbrella she runs Balmedy Sensory Garden, the Sand Bothy at Balmedy Beach, litter picking groups for Balmedy and Potterton and the beach wheelchairs. Rosie's interests are always focused on how she can improve the community here. She is a community stalwart devoting all of her time to this area. Congratulations to you all. Judges declared our 2022 winner, the epitome of local community service. It's a huge pleasure to announce now that the winner of the 2022 Lifetime Achievement Award is Marion Bruce. <laughs> Thank you. 
Congratulations. And congratulations again to our finalists in each and every category. To all our winners tonight, I'm delighted to invite you all to a special civic reception at Meldrum House, where we will be able to celebrate and officially hand over these trophies. Before I hand back to you, Fiona, I want to thank a few people for their part in making tonight happen. To everyone who nominated or was nominated, thank you. Thank you to the members of our judging panel, who were tasked with the difficult decision of choosing our finalists and winners. To our performers, thank you for the extra sparkle you bring to these awards. To our corporate sponsors, thank you for all your support, without which our event wouldn't be possible. Our headline sponsors, BP and NEOS Networks, and award sponsors, Aberdeenshire Voluntary Action, In Stock, TPS Fruit and Veg and Oxygen Finance. I wish to thank Roy Stewart and Andrew Dunn of Stream Television, along with Merns and Gill, for helping to create our wonderful films and put on a fantastic digital event again. Our event tonight is just one part of the whole Inspiring Aberdeenshire experience. From nominations and the judging process, liaising with finalists and sponsors, organising the ceremony and what comes with it. It's a major undertaking and I'd like to thank our events, communications and design team for making our biggest event happen. Finally, I'd like to thank you, Fiona, our MC extraordinaire, for taking us through the proceedings and effortlessly keeping us on track. It's been lovely to have your company tonight. My sincere thanks to you and everyone who has played a part in tonight. Fiona, back over to you. Thank you, Judy. And it has been an absolute pleasure as always. Tonight has been a celebration. It is absolutely heartwarming. Another year of toasting and recognising those who have gone absolutely above and beyond. You, the people who continue to make a positive difference in your communities, who do so with such kindness and such determination and often thankfully a lot of humour thank goodness so please if you take anything away from tonight know that you are appreciated know that what you do doesn't go unnoticed that you leave a legacy and that you've enriched the communities that you live in you work in and you continue to champion from everyone at inspiring aberdeenshire thank you once again we are so proud of you thank you for joining us there's a lot of good stories to celebrate. Good night.